Today's podcast is presented by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast, providing podcasters with a flat rate for ad space so you always know how much you get when you include an ad from Podgo. Apply today to become a member and immediately be connected with advertisers that fit your audience. That's podgo.co at p-o-d-g-o dot c-o. Again, that is podgo.co. And be sure to add our podcast in the How Did You Hear About Podgo section of the application. Now, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of This Week in Gaming. Do you, how do, beautiful lords and ladies of Nergum? Manny Roman with me as always, the man with the golden locks, Brennan, eh? Hey, excited. And, Good time. Hey. Yeah, 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 a lot of good stuff to talk about, and as always, joining us, everyone's favorite Pokemon master, Mr. Adam Kovac. That's never going to get old. <laughs> That's like my dream come true. I need to start talking to Madison about like calling me that from now on. I'm just, I'm, I'm just here to put a smile on your face, buddy. That's, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Thanks, So man. I appreciate it. Welcome to This Week in Gaming for December 13th couple of huge things that happened this past week that we're going to dive into of course the game awards and of course cyberpunk first got some stuff to, to bring up to you guys uh brandon if you'd like to take it away since you're the man with the plan yeah you know the things yeah definitely uh we do still have two giveaways going on uh we did have one of them of course end and i guessing we'll kind of touch on that shortly uh, with the Game Awards news. But we have currently the 100 follower giveaway goal on twitch.tv slash TNC Penguin or once we hit 500 followers on the Facebook page for TNC Penguin Gaming. And that is going to be for a Phantom Rage booster box to whoever, you know, of course, wins that on stream once we hit those goals. And then we have the 250 follower giveaway on twitch.tv slash the nerd chambers. And that is going to be for a $100 PSN gift card. So anyone out there who is, you know, wanting to still get Cyberpunk, who hasn't been able to yet, got that PSN gift card for you once we get the 250 follower goal. Key, key. Show the back now. <laughs> <laughs> scratch it yeah. off. No, it scratch it off and show everyone. <laughs> First one gets it. <laughs> I'll do it right now. <laughs> Yeah, you got one sitting at your desk too, buddy? <laughs> oh, no, I think he was going to type no, it no, in. No, I mean, I'll claim it right now. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, you won't claim it. No, 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 no. Uh, no I don't even have I already, <laughs> I already did it. <laughs> Dang. That'd be terrible. That'd be mean. Um, so, outside of that, uh, again, uh, we'll let you guys know when the next uh, sale's going on with the Spreadshirt site. Uh, it is coming in the next couple of weeks. So just stay tuned for that. I think we're just going to jump right into the news here. So, this week we're going to be doing a full recap of the Game Awards. But first, we had some news drop about a game that we were just talking about a week or two ago. Halo Infinite. It was announced that the game has finally been given a new release window after being pushed out of the Xbox Series X's launch window. And is now going to release in fall of 2021. Game's dead. Good job. Yep, yeah, game's dead. It's not dead. No, it's dead. No, it's just going to do what <laughs> Cyberpunk did and just like delay for eight years and then finally come out. Yeah, but at least people are excited about Cyberpunk. I don't care about Halo Infinite anymore. It's too long. This game was supposed to come out on release of the console. Microsoft's dead. Halo's dead. This is it. <laughs> GG. I, it all yeah, down. It's yeah. over. <laughs> I, I, I didn't be the. I didn't want to be the one to say it, but uh, yeah. Sony. Uh, GG. <laughs> GG already. We're we're one month into the cycle, and Sony has already won the next seven years. Good job. <sighs> Yikes. It's okay. Hey, uh, Fable. Fable in twenty twenty two will bring it back. It's all good. It, it'll be it a good lifesaver. It could. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to uh, PC and the Xbox streaming app only. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be wild. Um, yeah, I... Really, really unfortunate news, honestly. It's... For for somebody who 
as much as I as I sided with PlayStation, like I love these franchises. I love Halo, love Gears, love Fable, but there's a reason why I've kind of I I I I, I, I kind of give Xbox grief, and it's things like this, man. You come out and. You know, you, you tease your you tease the next Halo game, tease the next Halo game, and then you actually show them what the game looks like, and then pretty much everybody that saw that footage was like, "Man, I don't like that." And then you're just like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah we're just gonna we're just gonna push it back a year, then we'll, we'll we're gonna try this again. We'll get back to you guys." It's a like, tough time right now to be part of Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, uh, it hurts. Anything with it's <laughs> just yeah, tough right now. Uh, I I I don't, I don't know what to say, man. It's it's really honestly it's frustrating because Halo's one of the like the staple franchises for a lot of a lot of gamers, especially gamers you know around our age. Halo Two, Halo Three, those are like the games growing up, and you know, franchise hasn't ha hasn't been where it should be in a long time. And uh, I, I think the perception of it's just going to—it's just getting worse at this point, and that's really disappointing. Yeah, I, I definitely don't disagree. You know, we brought up before how there's talks there could be a battle royale in the game, and it really sucks to, over the last five-ish years, to see Halo just try to follow the trends rather than setting their own. Because, you know, Manny, you've been the one preaching it for so long that they since they're starting to follow, it's just really kind of killing the franchise because you just kind of, you're following in with these I, I, big movements at the end of them when Halo used to be a game that innovated everything. I mean, it was the arcade shooter. It's what everyone wanted to play that really kind of revolutionized the, the Quake and, you know, GoldenEye 007 feel of games. So it just, I don't know. It, it's fallen apart and... I really thought Halo Infinite could save it. It could. It's just I can't believe it's going to be another um, nine to twelve months. Another full year. Yeah. Ah, uh, Halo. I hope the best, but I, I hope the best for Halo Infinite. But I think I'm just saying, like that franchise kind of kind of died a little bit when Bungie left. Just saying. Just saying. But on to some lighter news, some good news, some great news. One of the most fun days in the gaming year, Game Awards 2020, came and went on Thursday this past week, and there was a ton to unpack. There were tons of awards given, ton more announcements and premieres for what's to come. But we are going to start our conversation for the Game Awards on the awards side. So... What was the biggest surprise of the night for you guys? That's easy for me. Best on going, No Man's Sky. <laughs> Why? Trash game. <laughs> I, I'm not surprised you said that. I, and I, I feel like it has. Oh, you're just trying to to ruffle my feathers, and I respect that. I will always poop. <laughs> always. <laughs> always best on going should have been call of duty warzone and we get no man's sky yeah and i think i think most of us did pick warzone um i <laughs> it was guys, a recollection i mean you well, guys you guys you guys swayed <laughs> me you guys swayed me with your um your you know call of duty's never been this relevant for a, a full year like you're kind of right. Yeah. You guys swayed me because I was going to pick No Man's Sky. I was going to be the one. And I was swayed by your your fiendish ways. <laughs> um, but I, I think that's I think that's kind of a fair one. But uh, here's the thing. No Man's Sky still has such a great following and appreciation from the gaming community. And especially, we have to remember these were... Oh, oh, it's three players? Uh, 100,000 plus, if I remember right still. So three um, players, just a lot of accounts. <laughs> they're all mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, that 90% of the vote is 
goes to people who are in the industry like you know writers and things like that like they take up they they account for a majority of the result so that's kind of why is that a lot of people in in the industry really really respect the the redemption arc of no man's sky i think that's kind of a big thing plus the next gen update that game looks insane now with that next gen update i will give them a lot of credit for that uh brandon how about you uh I, I started writing an article the other day about how furious these game wars made me. But I, as weird as it is uh, that I want to go to Tsushima to win every single award that it possibly could, uh, the best art direction goes to Tsushima winning that one. That one actually kind of upset me that Ghost of Tsushima won that one. Just because of... I really loved on what... Um, I have to look up the name real quick. Uh, Ori in the Will of the Wisps. I really love that for a platformer, it looked so beautiful. Uh, that was one I was kind of surprised with, and also Hades getting so much love. And I mean, to me, Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us Part Two, they're both very realistic games. And because Last of Us was taking everything, I was kind of surprised that it, that Last of Us didn't take that one, or even Final Fantasy. I don't like remakes winning big awards, but when it comes to art direction, that is the one thing other than the score, which that's another one I'm fine with. But that was the one thing that I thought Final Fantasy should, I'm okay with them winning because it is a revamp. It's completely new graphics. Uh, so honestly, if I had to rate all the games, Ghost of Tsushima out of, was probably my least favorite for the art direction, even though I thought it should win a lot of other awards. Uh, I think that's, I, I can kind of agree with you there. I I do think the, the art direction of Ghost of Tsushima is fantastic, though. Um, and we talked about it on TNC Live with all of, all of the uh, the different, basically, filters you can play the game in with, like, the whole samurai movie style or just, just straight black and white and all that. So um, I, I can definitely see why Ghost of Tsushima won that one. For me, I think it's Among Us winning best multiplayer. Thank you. I wanted to say that, but I was going to vent too much. Because I literally wrote a full four-paragraph article about how pissed I am about that. And I deleted it because it was too much and it was too angry and I just couldn't post it. <laughs> oh. I, I, that one fumes me. <laughs> I just... I don't know. I, there, there were so many good games in that category... That it just it just felt wrong to have Among Us win that. Because it's a very loosely structured game. It's not like the game is a technical achievement for multiplayer games. It's a social game. Yep. And and it's a very fun social game. It's not to take away from the game. Because it is very fun and I really enjoy it. Uh, but to say it was the best multiplayer game of the year and i and not i don't know not only to mention that it's not a game that came out this year that came out two years ago but yep. it just i don't know they're they're better multiplayer games i would have honestly been okay with them giving it to animal crossing over among us 100 percent. and i didn't care for animal crossing it was fine it was fine but i like, i don't know yeah I think I think it was the least deserving of the five games there. Thank you. But being honest, hundred percent agree. I don't understand why a game two years ago can win an award for twenty twenty for best multiplayer game. I also do not think Call of Duty Warzone should be in there as well because that game did technically kick them on a year ago. Yes, it does have updates all the time. But then why is Fortnite not in contest? Why is League of Legends not in contention? Like. What is the cutoff? And that's what I don't understand here. Because if it's just all around 2020 best multiplayer, well then League of Legends, Fortnite, Call of Duty, Apex Legends, and find Among Us should be in this talk. If it's best game that was made in 2020, well then it should be, yeah, Animal Crossing, Fall Guys, Valorant. Actually, did, did Animal Crossings come out this year, technically? Yes, it came out in March. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's been a long year. So... All three of those should have been a contention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sure there are some other small games that should have been a contention instead, and that's just what really bugged me about this one. I, I guess it wasn't a surprise because 
you know, you're going to put this in the contention and every single person who's played the video game even doesn't even care about the awards is going to go vote for this game because it's the one game that they played. It, look, here, look at Alex. I mean, he hasn't played a video game in like five, ten years, but he would have put his heart and soul for this game to win this award. And that's what kind of bothers me because it's not, it's not from 2020. It's not even a, a great game. It's, it, it's a fine game. I just don't get it. All right, I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna. You guys take over the rest of the show. I know you guys are gonna go heavy into cyberpunk, and I don't have enough to let say out. yet. So I just had to go. <laughs> let out. We'll let you. We'll, we. Sh you, I know you need to let off some steam, buddy. It's okay. Do you need? Do you have anything else for Among Us? <laughs> Game's not even fun. <laughs> it sucks. It, it's. So, to kind of recap the 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 general results of this show with you guys, it was The Last of Us Part Two show, to put it simply. Yep. The game won six, all the six major awards it was up for. Laura Bailey won Best Performance. Laura Bailey played Abby in The Last of Us Part Two. And I know you guys have just like most people with that game have a lot of opinions on on the game in general but but how did how did you feel about them kind of sweeping the show i honestly think it's rightfully so uh, you know i didn't love the way the game went for the direction I, I sure and it wasn't even the ending everyone complains about the ending i just didn't like what they did with the main character throughout the game i thought the way they ended it though perfect i really did like that a lot uh all around i mean the game was made very well it looked beautiful people did enjoy actually playing it it was smooth and all around it was great so i i i kept putting ghost of tsushima, tsushima for all my stuff just because that was the most exciting game that i watched at least out of the ones uh up for nominees but last of us 2 deserves it i mean i i'm not gonna try to fight that at all yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I picked Last of Us two for most of my my choosings when they were available, and uh, pretty sure that's where most of my points came from. So <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, I, I again, I, I I keep saying it. Like, I understand people's disappointment with the direction of the game. Like, it's not what people wanted from the sequel, but the game was made incredibly well and i mean you can see it in in the way that the the actors talk about that game like the the process to it is is so different and and special compared to other games that are nerve driven like that so uh as much as i'm sure the general public doesn't like it because ghost of tsushima actually won the the player's choice book for mm -hmm. game of the year uh, I think it took like 47% of the final vote. Last of Us had like 32. Uh, but uh, I, 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 f I say this, I, I, I don't even remember where I commented. It was somewhere on Facebook because somebody was, was going on about all this stuff. And I'm like, uh, the reason, so somebody was saying that they didn't trust reviews from like actual like people who, you know, cover the industry. Yeah. And I was like, I don't trust player reviews if I'm being honest people who like player reviews it's generally either fanboys of the franchise or people who are mad because they ran into a bug or it wasn't for them which is fine but you can't really you don't really see a middle ground too often you don't see a, a, a genuine analysis of how the game actually plays and, and the, the narrative and all that so um I feel like a lot of people are just, you know, frustrated again with the direction of Last of Us 2, ignoring the fact that that game was made incredibly well all around. So I, I, I same with you guys, I, I do think it deserved a lot of the awards. I'm not super surprised after, you know, we talked about they, they won like six awards at the Golden Joysticks. So good on them. Good on them. Hopefully whenever they make the third one, the uh, the direction is is more what what people are hoping for from the game, because the franchise is still still pretty uh pretty great. 
So, to wrap up the results part, uh, if you can see it on our Twitter, uh, we're going to just quickly recap the results of our predictions contest we had going on. For the TNC crew, Sammy didn't do too hot. I'll just say <laughs> that. He was he was in last place by a little bit. Yeah, by a, yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, you know, it will be nice. <laughs> <laughs> then it was Brandon. Then it was Golden and Cass. <clears throat> then it was me and Adam. Bray took second, and then our local video game expert guru genius Alex from TNC Movie Nights was our big winner for our side. And then we had the contestants from the community fellow by the name uh, his twitter handle oh kevin b223 he slayed it uh i didn't i didn't add in the game of the year results because he ran away with it but i believe with the game of the year he had 16 of the of the winners right which is over half which is pretty impressive yeah give him a lot of credit he beat all he beat everybody beat everybody on our side wasn't even close. GG's. Rigged. We <laughs> <laughs> and we already we already uh, you know came through on our end of the bargain. We got him his uh, pregame. Uh, shocker! It was Cyberpunk. Um, it was a perfect time for the contest. <laughs> honestly, oh, <yeah. laughs> it really was. But yeah, awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we were able to do that for you guys. So now the uh, equally as fun part of the awards, honestly, probably more fun than the awards. The announcements that we got from the show. <laughs> so here's the thing <laughs> here's the thing I think the thing was there were so many announcements no and it, just they and... sucked <laughs> I, I, I'll throw it out there I, again wow. my article I, I'm glad I deleted it because I was just venting that article it was <laughs> I, it was just a constant 2020 most disappointing worst game awards ever and uh, wow <laughs> sucked what happened to brandon he used to be like this i love it, everything kind of guy i know I just hate 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 he's, <laughs> he's 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 been at home too long he spends mm. he spends too much time bickering with his dad about silly things and it's, it's rubbing off on him it's rubbing <laughs> off on him and he's becoming s slightly more cynical and slightly more like his dad it's gonna be he's just slowly becoming a little bit more grumpy just wait for it just wait for it. He's going to get there. All right. So uh, to start off the talk about the announcements, um, give us give us one that, that you did like, Brandon. Uh, Back for Blood. Uh, it was cool seeing uh, the cinematic. I know it was just the alpha, so I'm not going to sit here and critique the mm -hmm. look of the gameplay too much. Definitely felt... And, and Go ahead. I was sorry. I was sorry to cut it. Out. I was just gonna say one. I do respect the hack out of the fact that they brought that. You can tell that was genuine gameplay from the the hundred you know, percent yeah. close technical test. Yeah, you can tell that that wasn't like, you know, just a a gameplay that was kind of fixated to look better than it was. That was you can mm -hmm. tell that was genuine gameplay because it wasn't perfect. Yeah, which I like because it sets expectations the right way. Hey, this game actually isn't ready, but we want you to try it. You know, go yeah. ahead. I 100% uh, I agree. It definitely looked and still uh, felt in a sense of just visual that it was left for dead. And that's cool. I mean, that's what we want. That's what everyone looking forward to Back for Blood is hoping for. A Left for Dead 3 with a new title because they have to. Uh, outside of that, uh, I'm excited for Elder Scrolls Online for like that community. It looked cool. Like it's exciting. It is uh, Mass Effect. I want to keep my eyes on it. Just because, like, don't it, don't keep your eyes on it. Take your eyes off. Last one was trash. It's not going to get better. Yeah. It, once a game hits trash level, it never goes back to what it was. It might yeah. be a little bit better than trash at one point, but it'll never be good again. Uh, Dragon Age. I, I have a little bit of hopes there, but. I think the sad thing is that one of the like the next most exciting game of the list I'm looking at sir, was, was Overcooked. Sir. <laughs> sir, I gave you one. I said one. Give me one. You gave me like five. I need you to calm down. I'm I'm just <laughs> like they weren't that good. Like they just weren't. 
So I mean, Adam, Adam, Adam. I need you. I need you to say things just so this man stops talking. Okay, yeah, sure. So, uh, <laughs> um, honestly, it, I agree with Brandon. It was bad. Back for Blood is all I cared about. Yep. <laughs> it's why I talked because I knew he was just gonna say Back for Blood, and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. I'm I literally content. highlighted Back for Blood, and that's <laughs> it. Yep. Everything else, I don't care, dude. It wasn't good. So, no. It's so, just a lot of updates. So, there there was definitely some other things that I did like. Um, we'll just run it. We'll, we'll start running through them. We'll, we'll run through them. So, they kicked it off with, just like last year, Super Smash Brothers character drop. Uh, this time it's uh, Sephiroth for um, Final Fantasy VII remake. Or the original, I guess either or, whichever one, you know, float your boat. Second, this was actually a really cool announcement. Um, I, I don't know if you guys played the the original game from like the N64 or the, the, the sequel from the 360, but Microsoft and the initiative dropped a cinematic trailer for the announcement that Perfect Dark is coming back. Uh, it's the, the title of it was just Perfect Dark but really cool to see that franchise back. Uh, it was one of the, I think it was a launch title for the 360, and it was one of the first like multiplayer shooters on those systems, and it was actually really fun. I, I remember playing it a good bit with my brothers uh, when we got the system originally. Uh, so I, I think that's a really fun announcement. They followed that, and again, this is, this is what I was talking about. They followed that up, which was, again, really cool announcement with back for blood and i think that was a mistake you had two really good announcements back to back on a list of by the way 43 different announcements throughout the show you had two sweet ones back to back and then it was just kind of eh, for a little bit um yeah back for blood super stoked uh for those of you that aren't that didn't watch the game awards there is going to be a closed alpha starting on the 17th which is friday Friday? Is it Thursday? Or is it Friday? The 17th? It's Thursday. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. I don't work that day, so maybe I'll get a code. I gotta go see a doctor that day. I'm gonna die. Oh. It's blood. I think it was, it was, it was, it was a little much to, to you know, share. But, <laughs> nah, you know. Nah. I just want to let everyone know your favorite Pokemon master. He's not going to be here much longer. No, I'm kidding. No, it's just blood work, y'all. I'm going to be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. I trust you, buddy. <laughs> Prayers up. Uh, so after that, they uh, announced, right? Which, again, weird to follow that up. Uh, Scavengers has a closed beta that started that night. So it is. Yeah, available. I got a code for it. And I was like, eh. I will say, it would be cool to have all three of us play it together. We were we were needing a third that could, you know, help us instead of do literally nothing. Yeah, just a third with thumbs would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> literally anything. Maybe maybe one day. I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm busy with a bunch of games right now. I'm busy with one game, and that's okay. <laughs> Follow it up again. I, I personally think this is a cool... Uh, update on a game that's coming out hood outlaws and legends the pvevp game uh from focus home uh they announced a release date for it of may 7th 2021 on now last gen and current gen consoles as well as pc so i'm looking forward to it they gave a little bit of gameplay on it uh, i actually saw last week or two weeks ago they dropped character trailers for all the classes uh, I think it gives going to be pretty fun. Personally. I think it's going to be pretty fun. Uh, let's see. There's a Forza slash Cyberpunk crossover. Uh, now this game did look pretty cool. The Callisto Protocol. Uh, it's a, a game from some of the original heads of the Dead Space franchise. Uh, the trailer one looked beautiful too. Looked spooky. Definitely looks spooky. Um, that one's going to be a good ways off, though. It comes out in 2022. I was furious when that was not a new Dead Space game. 
I was getting so I literally had I, I remember a, just hearing Brandon during it being like Adam dead space I think this is dead space and I was like well I wasn't able to watch it live and I was just like thing in my head I was like man a new dead space and then I saw this and I'm like oh well now I'm not as happy because my hype level was like way up here <laughs> yeah Sorry. So <laughs> that's one of two announcements that really got you got your juices flowing and then kind of didn't didn't hit home for Brandon. The other one, the other one is actually still a really cool announcement. It's the last one they made in the show. We'll talk about it in a minute, but it wasn't what we were hoping for. I will agree with you. Uh, shut off some gameplay of Warhammer 40k Dark Tide, uh, a game called Open Roads from uh, Annapurna. This is one of the games that they got pushed back to next year. Disco Elysium got a final cut that has tons of new quests and things like that, and it is coming to consoles as well next year. And then came another trailer for Dragon Age 4. Didn't give us a whole lot. I will say, though, the environments in that trailer were gorgeous. Makes me want GAM. Uh, but it is interesting to see Solus back in the fold for Dragon Age 4. Uh, especially because he's kind of got that villainy vibe this time around. So I'm intrigued. I want more. But I know that game's probably not out for a while. Yeah, I. Uh, it was cool seeing a little something from this. And and this is kind of what killed me with the, the Game Awards. The spacing, like as you mentioned, was so weird. Because at this point of the game awards i was like oh my goodness they're giving us so much good stuff right now and it's just ramping up and then after this award until the last award or two sorry an uh, announcement or two yeah. dog doo-doo the rest of the way all absolute garbage just game updates nothing else was fun fair fair <laughs> like the and that's my thing. I like my perspective of it. I took that first like half of the show with those those pretty cool announcements that they dropped. I'm like, okay, I'm I, I like this. I'm okay with this. Um, and actually, uh, I, I kind of want to touch on just like Microsoft and Sony once we go through the rest of the announcements. Um, so next game called Endless Dungeon. This one looked kind of interesting. I it's four player kind of twin it, it's got that over the top twin stick kind of feel i doubt it's actually going to be a twin stick shooter it might be but uh there's like different classes you pick from and it's a roguelike uh dungeon crawler then they dropped a a heck of a trailer this is like an eight minute trailer it felt like for crimson desert crimson desert and uh i i know you don't like the combat style that that game offers but man does that game look sweet uh yeah it, it was beautiful i at the end of it i was saying i i'm sad that i don't enjoy the combat style because that game is going to be one of the most potentially beautiful games that come out at that time it it just sucks the the combat direction they went so the what Brandon's alluded to is the the game's going to have more of an action oriented combat almost like a Final Fantasy 15 kind of feel kind of actiony uh not the not like the tap targeting that Brandon likes uh but there was some really cool stuff from the trailer uh it's an MMO that's going to have a little more of a cinematic narrative of, similar to a Dragon Age and Elder Scrolls. Uh, there's going to be like actual kind of cinematics to the storyline to it, which is really cool. On top of that, you can fly a dragon and it looked amazing. Uh, the, the thing I'm most confused about, this is the same company who made Black Desert online. I believe so. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at their list of games right now. Pearl Abyss is the, um, the studio. Mm -hmm. And for what I'm getting, this is going to be kind of like Destiny 1, Destiny 2. It's going to be plays the same, potentially same characters, classes, but just kind of new areas. So 
It's kind of weird that this isn't just going to be a big expansion. This is going to be apparently a brand new game. I am fine yeah, with it. A little weird to give up on an MMO and start a new one. Yeah, and then name it that Crimson Desert instead of Black yeah. Desert. That, I don't know. That's just kind of weird. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's okay. Because... As as long as you get to ride dragons, dude, that game's gonna be uh, gonna be sweet. <laughs> yeah, that just that 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 really like saying the things that they were doing in that trailer. I'm like, how is, there's how are you gonna make that work in an MMO? I don't see how it's going to work, like unless you have an insane amount of data on these servers, like crazy, good good crazy. Moving on though, we have overcooked. Uh, DLC Warframe slash Unreal Tournament crossover. They talked a little bit about Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Season 1. Uh, they talked about a new game called Season coming to the PlayStation. And then one of the most disappointing trailers from the entire show. This is weird. You get... So imagine this. You look like you're in like, you know, prehistoric times. You got Vin Diesel with a group of, you know, people from his tribe, whatever. Vin Diesel, you got these weird orc looking dudes, and you just see Vin Diesel going at it, going at it with these dudes. And then you see a dinosaur show up, and you're like, whoa, what is happening? Right? Crazy. Nah, as soon as you see the dinosaur, you know what up. <laughs> Starts, fights the dinosaur, then goes back to saving his people. And all this cool stuff's happening. Then, uh, you know, a couple minutes later, you know, trailer comes up, and you see this big crazy world. I'm like, I literally was just yelling. I'm like, what is this? I don't understand. And then it said Arc Two, and then I was, I actually flipped my thing. <laughs> Once again, weird that this like online multiplayer game is creating a second version yeah yeah i don't know what's yeah. happening right now in this world of gaming yeah, man. it's like if runescape well i should i guess they kind of did that so never <laughs> mind three. never mind uh world of warcraft 2 well, comes rs3 out. was different they didn't want to do it like that but too many people complained about the combat style the evolution of combat and so then they brought back old, old school, school runescape yeah so that's why they tried to not do it but too many people complained which is fair if you like the old way of it i get it but that's why so they did it for the community yeah doesn't doesn't who, doesn't. who the hell in arc asked let's get a number two <laughs> instead of let's get an update my thing is why you been diesel for that? Why? Yeah. Why also, do why that even diesel? It's not why, even a... why get us all amped up to have a a a like an A list actor? Uh, in... Oh, okay. Nah, dude, A tier. Yeah, A tier. Get out of here. He's in this crappy Fast and the Furious movie. <laughs> <laughs> you broke him. You know, hey, you're right. At least he was in a good movie hey. like Pacifier. Chronicles of Riddick. Oh. Chronicles of Riddick was all right. I love the Chronicles. Of They're good movies. Did you ever see? The, did you ever see the first one? I don't remember the name of it, but it wasn't called the Chronicles. Pitch of Black. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That movie was great. I loved that. I didn't know when I when I was watching it as a kid that it was actually like a part of a franchise. I thought it was just the the first one. I thought it was just Chronicles of Riddick, and we're getting more Chronicles of Riddick. And then I found out Pitch Black was a thing, and I, I was watching it like this is kind of sick. And then I found out it was the first movie in that franchise. I'm like, that mm -hmm. looks cool. But yeah, why like I don't know why why get an why get an A list actor to play in a trailer for a game that he's not even gonna be a part of? It's yeah, like, Ark does not have NPCs besides dinosaurs. Why do so? That? Unless they're doing something different, and that's why it's Ark Two, and they're gonna go more of the GTA free roam style, where there will be some NPCs. I don't know, but like that's still kind of, and there's still going to be a story, so more like Far Cry. Maybe they're going Far Cry. Hey, but you know, to make things even more interesting, if you didn't think that was enough arc in your life, 
they announced an animated series for the show. Why? Or for the game? Uh, Why? I don't know. Uh-huh. <laughs> what they gonna be about? I wish I knew. Just you know, the the trailer showed two people fighting, and then they're you know one of them one of them won the fight, and that was it. It's gonna it's, be like your poor man's Jurassic Park. I just, uh, weird, weird move. And the thing that confused, like, uh, did you see the voice actor uh, voice acting list for that show? Mm. They got like Gerard Butler. And like all of these like really big time actors to voice act this show. Let me let me get to the full list pulled up because this is. That's nutty. Yeah, I mean, if it has like somebody like Gerard Butler, even though it is just voice acting, I still will at least watch an episode. Yeah, Vin Diesel, Russell Crowe, David Tennant, uh, Brandon's favorite Elliot Page. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Wright, like they got a heck of a cast. That's for the a really show. good cast. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I was, I was really confused why it was very, happening. Very, very weird. Hmm. Alrighty then. So we'll keep we'll keep chugging along. Like I said, there's a lot. Forty three announcements. There's tons of stuff. <laughs> you know, Fall Guys season three announcement. They showed off some actual gameplay of uh, Elite Dangerous Odyssey. Uh, Evil Dead game got announced. Ghost and Goblins Resurrection. Uh, had a trailer announced. Capcom Arcade Stadium. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't pay attention during that trailer, so I have no idea what's gonna be in it. Uh, looks like we have a Microsoft Flight Sim Xbox port. I thought it was already on Xbox. <laughs> Flight Sim, baby. Um, Returnal, the the PS5 exclusive, got on a release date of March. I want to say 19th of next year. Uh, it takes two gameplay. Uh, this one I, I personally thought was really cool. Elder Scrolls Online really or announced its next big expansion coming next year. The Gates of Oblivion are finally coming. Monster Hunter Rise got a trailer. Evil West, which kind of looked cool, but also like seems like one of those games that's gonna be kind of cool. But I also don't have an interest in playing it. it just looks cool. Cause you're just like a dude in the, in like you're like a you know western gunslinger looking guy and you're like fighting vampires and demons and stuff and it's kind of wild cool trailer then to wind things down with uh scarlet nexus a new jrpg from bandai got a trailer they announced the new among us map the airship uh fortnite announced two new crossovers with halo master chief and the walking dead with daryl and michonne <laughs> All I keep this seeing one, right now. Why is, they gotta do Master Chief like that? I know. All I keep seeing right now is like Master Chief coming out of a room or something. It's like that's the guy from Fortnite. And I'm like, God, <laughs> I, I hate everything right now. Oh man. One it thing I did. Sad. One thing I did think was cool though, along with those Fortnite announcements, was they announced that Blood Gulch is gonna be a map in Fortnite. Yeah, that was kind of cool. That's I, cool. I, I'll agree. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Halo needed to do something this year, right? <laughs> the fact that Fortnite with the Halo introduction is going to be better than Halo Infinite hurts my soul. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Uh, so the last two announcements, uh, Ruined King, a League of Legends story, that turn-based uh, tactical RPG that's in the works. For the league of legends universe got a gameplay trailer i thought it looked pretty cool it kind of had a darkest dungeon kind of vibe to it so i think that's gonna be pretty fun it did seem like there's a part of the trailer where they showed off there's gonna be like side quests and like optional stuff to do outside of just like playing through the story which i like uh, but i don't think they even gave us a launch window yet i think it, i know it's supposed to be next year i think it's early next year but i don't think they gave us more than that and the last thing, the last announcement, space. Trailer start, space. Looks beautiful and everything. Me. And I I and I feel like this was my fault because I was hyping up Brandon. I'm like, yeah. Brandon, I think this is it. This is it. They're doing it. Starfield trailer. And it ended up being a, uh, a Mass Effect teaser trailer for the next Mass Effect game. 
which it does sound like they're going back to the Shepard kind of story arc that the first three games had. Uh, because we did see, I can't remember her name, but the, the blue alien lady from the, the first three games. That's like one of the most beloved characters in the like game. A, start with like an A or an S. It's yeah. Cool yeah, it yeah. starts with an A, I'm pretty sure, but I can't remember her name. But anyways, it was just a teaser showing that they are working on a new Mass Effect title. It does sound like they're going back to the uh, story arc of the original trilogy. Going from there. No idea when this game is going to come out. They did say it's incredibly early development, so we probably won't see it for a good while. I would probably, I would honestly bet it probably comes out like a year after Dragon Age, which is rumored to not come out for two more years. Well, actually, 2022. 2025, so. baby. We'll see. Is there, can we'll you take a moment real quick just to talk about how amazing the Game Awards 2021 announcements, amount, announcements are going to be? We're probably gonna get Mass Effect. We'll probably get Starfield. Probably get Elder Scrolls, uh, God of War, maybe Fable, uh, and then maybe we'll also get multiplayer reveal for Halo. That would be crazy. Uh, it's gonna... <laughs> Don't worry, and, and you forgot the Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven multiplayer reveal. Oh, <laughs> you're right. Honestly, the twenty twenty one might be a really good year for uh, for announcements at the Game Awards because this year was rough. <laughs> I, I I think there's just too much. I think there's too many things. I think there's too many things that didn't have like a big enough impact. Yeah. And to to get to what I was talking about earlier, like wanting you to touch on Microsoft and Sony, like I'm sorry, but Sony being like tune into the game awards at six PM tomorrow or I think it was day of. I think they said I think it was the day of they sent the tweet out to like Keep an eye on the Game Awards. Starts at six, like, and then to have your only real thing be Returnal, which is probably like a C tier exclusive that not a lot of people are gonna care about. Like, that was kind of disappointing. I'm gonna be honest. Xbox at least had a couple things. Perfect Dark is a really cool announcement. Like Halo. Oh wait. Uh, for uh, <laughs> Fortnite. 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 Um, you know, at least they had Perfect Dark, which is a, a, a pretty well-known franchise that a lot of people really enjoy. And it was kind of a surprise to some people. Uh, PlayStation, just, you, you got an update about one exclusive that we've we've known about for months. And that's all I got to say about it. <laughs> I, just, I genuinely have no interest in the game, just the, the stuff that's come out about it. I don't know, man. I, I think it fell flat. I think it was a missed opportunity from those two. Um, I guess even Nintendo too, with all these rumors swirling around the past like year that they have a Switch Pro in the works, and we're, we're hearing nothing from them about it. I don't know. I like it was. It's the biggest stage of the year, especially in a year like this when everyone's at home, and you already have one of the most watch events online gonna have an even bigger audience because everyone's at home like i don't know i feel like you could add something huge there and none of the th big three companies really delivered yeah it was uh it was pretty upsetting yeah but there were some cool ones out there i like i'm gonna be completely honest i might have to play elder scrolls online when gates of oblivion comes out you're gonna be so far behind. You better grind already. Eventually, I'll get to it. No, he won't. Get he won't. Yeah, yeah. if he yeah, says yeah, it yeah. like that, he's not. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, if I had friends to play with, it'd be a lot easier. But I don't. So, uh, yeah, six nice. seventy-five. It's, it's shiny. Magikarp. You can't see it too well right now, but it's my first shiny magic carp in the thing. <laughs> I mean, it'd be really, it'd be really funny if it, shinies didn't transfer with evolution. So you're, you're, you're shiny and magic, that'd be toxic. That'd be hilarious. Just yeah, shiny that'd be magic. so yes. <laughs> shiny it just magic rubbed off when I into... it. <laughs> <laughs> or it uh, turns into a, it turns into a dull version of the evolution. <laughs> it just becomes like gray. <laughs> I mean, for Elder Scrolls, it's one of those games that if we were really bored, I would play it again. It's just Adam and I grinded that game really hard already. 
we, yeah, we both did. got one or two characters to max we maxed out everything we could so we tried pvp yeah it was not good no nah. pvp was so bad in that game yeah so uh, it'd be something to think about like if we have nothing else to do you know middle of next year maybe yeah I'll hold you to it I'll hold you to it but yeah also uh, man the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm like man maybe this was a pretty bad year cause I'm like I was I was yeah. okay with the announcements but I'm like man like I was hoping we'd get something about Dragon Age PS like now something. how do we not get anything uh, how you said Sony hyped it up and we got nothing about anything from Sony practically yeah Ugh. Yeah, I, 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 honestly, that's kind of part of it. I just want to know what their plans are for PlayStation now. Yeah. You can't, you can't go on an interview, like two weeks before a big gaming event, and be like, we have something to talk about with one of our big <laughs> services, but not, not right now, not in this interview, and then just not give us anything at the Game Awards. Come on, man, killing me. Yeah, this, uh, me. this year sucked for the Game Awards. We were. <laughs> I, I don't know, I think it's just a big part of it. We were just, this has been such a big gaming year because COVID, we're all, you know, at home. So I think we're all more kind of expecting, which again, I understand there are certain ways that they couldn't have brought more because, yeah, I mean, people weren't working as much. So I, I do understand why it might have been a little more of a flop. But instead of just throwing 15 to 20 announcements of updates, that's just kind of garbage, just leave those out. Like, you, you could have really just taken out all those uh, game updates and maybe smashed it into one smaller segments for just game updates and it i don't know would have been a little smoother but this just felt so weird but you're yeah. right 2021 is going to be a good year yeah we can hope, we can I, hope I, for, I, I forgot even about dragon age i don't think i brought that up too i mean there's a lot of games that will probably at least get some sort of gameplay next year It'll be crazy. It really will be. And that that Microsoft or not Microsoft? Well, it's a Microsoft exclusive, but uh, I can't remember what the game's called. But it's by uh, what's their name? Obsidian. That Elder Scrolls looking RPG that got that trailer. I want to say it was at the Xbox Showcase in March or or not March, June or July. I, it was like it was called it was a super simple name i think it started with an a i can't remember it uh it's avowed. Bother me. avowed avowed yes yes more about that game too yeah that game looks sick there really could be a lot of great games uh for announcements next year so hopefully 2021 game awards kind of brings it up uh, a notch and it's going to be funny because the game award announcements will probably be great but honestly the games at least this year we had games like Last of Us, Ghost of um, Animal Crossing that did kind of bring some hype, but I guess Cyberpunk is like the one game that we can be excited about. And that's about it. Far Cry 6 comes out next year. Far Cry 6 should get some love, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. It's a lot, there's a lot coming. Halo. Halo Infinite, bro. That's Fall not going to be out in time for the Game Awards. Not a chance. No. You don't think it's going to be out in November in time? No, I do not. Really? Yeah. So you think it's going to get pushed back, back again? Yes. I think it will be November. I think it'll be like mid to late November, if not December. Dang. You heard it here? Interesting. Yeah, next year it's like Far Cry 6. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West, I think it's called. Yeah, Horizon sequel. Yeah. Yeah, Resident Evil Village, and Death. Your your most anticipated. I was gonna say your most anticipated game, Death Loop. Yeah, uh, Gotham <laughs> Knights. Those are kind of the big oh, ones. Oh yeah, year. that's right. They still got that game. They still got that Suicide Squad game. Yeah, so I mean, there's there, a, there's, there's some a... decent stuff coming out next year. I mean, Ratchet and Clank. So I'm more excited for next year on the announcements. Hopefully the games themselves will kind of hold up too. So a lot. There's so much ammunition that we know about, and that's I think that's the frustrating thing is that we know yeah. there's so much stuff coming, but 
we we haven't gotten enough of the stuff that's coming to get like genuinely hyped about it. So, I think that wraps up our game of the game awards talk. Um, our last thing we're going to touch on this week. One of the most anticipated games probably ever. I would probably say it's on the Mount Rushmore with like Red Dead Redemption 2, The Last of Us 2. Uh, honestly, I maybe got a war. But like this game has had a huge amount of hype and has been in the works for eight years. We've known about it for seven finally here finally they've gotten to play it i myself probably play a good 12 to 13 hours into it i you know when i'm not doing something or at work i'm playing cyberpunk the past four days and it feels great <laughs> honestly um it feels great to be able to just sink my teeth into a an rpg again um adam i'll i'll, I'll kind of let you you give your your general thoughts about the game and what you've played so far yeah so i'm probably on that same boat as manny probably got about like 12 hours or so of gameplay except mine's only with a two-day time span <laughs> um i just went crazy on it yesterday and today Echo mode <laughs> yeah my girlfriend was like you're still playing the game and i'm like yeah it's fun right now i'm playing it all right gosh um yeah no it's fun it's fun it's you know People are giving it a hard time because of its bugs. It's a Bethesda-like game. Like, it, it's gonna be like Skyrim with its bugs. It's gonna be like, I'm sure, Oblivion had bugs. I didn't really get to play it, but like, you know, Bethesda games, you have to expect that. And sure, you know, CD Projekt Red isn't Bethesda, but it's this huge game with a lot of different things going on in it yeah, it I has movable objects that just like have different you, you know, know gravitational effects and things are gonna go wrong i there's so there's so much what's the word i'm looking for i was, I was thinking of back to dreams that but there's so much there's so many like moving parts to the to the world and mm -hmm. I don't know if we've seen a game world be this big and as densely populated. Not just with people, but with buildings. There's skyscrapers on skyscrapers everywhere in this game. So Definitely. I, to have so much data condensed into one spot, I'm sure there's like, I, I get that there's issues. And it's frustrating. I, I get it. Oh, yeah. it is. The amount of times I kill something and it, you know, like the icon on your mini map shows what loot they drop, like color wise, you know, if it's purple, or orange for their rarity. And like the amount of times that it's something awesome like that and their body is not lootable for whatever reason is really annoying. But like it's it's not doesn't make it a bad game. Mm -hmm. Like so for me, I've I, I've gone against my word. I've that game's crashed on me six times now. Oof, I've just never crashed. Just uh, completely, PlayStation problems. Just completely crashed on me. <laughs> and I've been like, it's worth it. I'm going back in. Uh, that's and funny. Um... <laughs> I, there's also like a weird bug that like, I... um, Where your character I, constantly I, glitches out of a car? That's <laughs> annoying. So, so I, uh, we might be talking about the same thing. When I get out of... So I have a, I have a motorcycle. When I get off the motorcycle... Mm -hmm. It like doesn't bring up the HUD properly, and so I pull up the I pull up the the character screen, and then I back out of it, and it's normal again. No, mine's different. Mine because I I like to drive in third person because the Same. driving in that game is really hard, and like mm -hmm. my character will randomly just like pop out of the roof of the vehicle and like T stands, <laughs> and I'm oh. like, <laughs> I'm like, hey, I have it that's all awesome. the time. <laughs> I haven't had that one yet. Very I distracting. Haven't. <laughs> but like it's not game breaking like it's fine i've been able to do all of my missions like there hasn't been a single mission where i'm like oh well now i can't do it because of a bug like i'm sure some people mm -hmm. are experiencing that but thankfully i haven't yeah yeah game's just really fun i love the variety of weapons and your skill tree is massive 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 so you have five five different skill trees yeah, right five mm -hmm. five, five like, like 
class too. Yeah, exactly. So there's like five main um, things to put your attributes into. There's five attributes to put points into, and then each mm -hmm. attribute has like two to three like uh, perk skill trees to put it stuff into as well. Mm -hmm. And so the the depth in how you can customize your character is awesome. Uh, I love the cast of the game. Um, I, I can. So. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. And he's he's he is awesome, and I I do like his character a lot. Uh, I, without getting into the spoilers, I finished like you can kind of tell there's like a pretty much like a big intro chapter to the game that probably took me like five hours oh my to go gosh, through yes. i was shocked how long it took and then oh. finally it's like cyberpunk 2077 i was like i thought this happened like five hours ago <laughs> but everything that happens to lead up to the end of that though all of the all the scenes that lead up to that at the end of that little mini like intro arc mm -hmm. it was so good i had was. sucked in and you know a lot of people get frustrated when games have like kind of decently long sequences of mostly cutscene mm -hmm. and, and cinematic but i was sucked into it dude i'm like yo this there's some stuff going down and this is wild yeah. um so it, it did a great job of kind of kind of dragging you in and it did a great job of you know allowing you to have freedom and i think that's the coolest part about mm -hmm. this game is that you can really do things however you want and it kind of gives you that idea off the bat. You can, there's two kind of bigger missions to do in this intro chapter, and you can just not do them. You can just essentially go and do the third mission, which is the actual main story mission, and just ignore these other two. But it'll affect how that mission plays out because you mm -hmm. think, you know, circumstances will be different. So, to, to see how much genuine freedom it gives you in, in approaching all of these these missions and the amount of things you, you can do in the world. It seems like every street corner has like some encounter that you can do. It, it's mm -hmm. it's really fun and the game just kind of sucked me in and it's it, it's such a great, you know, feeling to be sucked into a game like this again because I haven't really had a game like that in a long time. Yeah. 100% agree. Brandon, have you gotten to play outside of your first stream? Uh, I played an extra like 30, 45 minutes more ish. So I'm about a little over three hours in. Uh, it plays really well. The gunplay is a lot of fun. Uh, everything with it so far has been very smooth. I haven't ran into any bugs yet myself. Uh, however, of course, I've played about a quarter of what you guys have. I am still waiting to kind of hit that point where I get sucked in because I'm still I'm, I haven't hit that Cyberpunk 2077 screen yet. Uh, at least I, I don't believe at this point. Yeah, no, it's a long time to hit it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm still kind of waiting for the game to kind of pull me in because right now I really don't understand the point of it. I feel like I'm just uh, do doing dirty jobs for people. Uh, so I'm kind of, I'm hoping that I get to see that, um, you know, I'm hoping it hits me that I do kind of like, wow, this is really cool. And the story does kind of grasp me. Uh, yeah, I mean, so far it, it runs a lot better than I thought it would. Yeah. Uh, side note, what did you guys choose? Like at the beginning, like for your like background? Your yeah. Your yeah. origin or whatever. I'm an, I did Nomad. You did Nomad. Okay. Street Kid. Brandon? Kid. We all did something different. You I did, did the corporate guy, Corpo. That's yeah, funny. You scumbag. You I, I almost did Corpo. Scumbag. That makes me so happy. I'm glad yeah. we each chose a different <laughs> path. Yeah. I, it was kind of weird. I, I thought I was going to spend more time in the Outlands. Outside of the city. Really didn't. That's what I'm kind of... Kinda... Go ahead. I was just going to say, I was in Night City probably like five minutes into the game yeah and that's what i'm kind of confused about too because i was watching uh critical play and he's going corpo and yeah I, you don't spend much time yeah a, in the corpo situation i don't really understand the, the different maybe there's different dialogue options later in the game maybe different there people is recognize yeah you. so like sometimes when i talk with somebody like and they bring up something about like corporate like people mm -hmm. i'm able to bond and connect and have 
you know, different options to maybe convince them to tell me something that I want to know because okay. of my corporal background. Okay. So your background has some small effects. Uh, also, you, it depend like, you know, whatever path you chose is like your free car you get as well. Okay. But I don't know what else it changes, obviously, because yeah. you know we're, we've each only played one path so far. Totally that is true. That is true. So, what is the most interesting gun, gun, or just general weapon that you found? Oh, easy. Um, I think it's called. Is it Trixie or something? Um, hold on. Cyber. Is it a pistol? Yes. Lizzie. It's like a Lizzie. Yep, that's what it is. It's the. It's the. Th it's the. It's pretty much like a shotgun pistol. And wowzers, it's damage. But I did see. I don't know if you guys saw it, but I posted a tiktok on it um for a gun that someone found and i'm not gonna say anything because spoilers i guess if you don't want to see it don't but it's so cool i i want to go find that gun i've heard there's like some pretty iconic weapons in the game so i'm curious what sort of stuff that there is in there i've i've tried to stay away from like seeing information about stuff in the game while i'm playing it because i want to experience it all with a fresh perspective um, the, the coolest thing I found though, and um, this was uh, under some hairy circumstances and it came in clutch, found the katana. You should have got a, one right away, just for having the game. It was a purple rarity, and it does buku damage. Never mind, the one you get from <laughs> starting the game is just blue rarity, so that's cool. I was super, I, was, I, I normally don't do melee in games, but it's pretty cool man i just like if if i get a chance to and the timing's right i'll just like book it while they're buying cover slide whip out the katana and just go ham skis on them it's fun it's that fun. is kind of neat yeah i've been enjoying um, the melee a lot i of course i have not put enough in so the coolest weapon i got is like some sort of like ricochet pistol thought that was yeah. kind of cool ricochet uh is cool. yeah but the the melee in the game is really good i'm shocked on how fluid it honestly is in um comparison just the movement yeah. in the game the only thing i will complain about with melee uh, melee is if you go down the cool route which is literally what i am i just only play cool yeah. i've only put points into cool and because it's stealth yeah. and i really liked that but in that tree there's an option to use throwing knives and then your throwing knives you know you make them do more damage yeah. they also do poison it's not as cool as you think. Okay. I'm sad that I spent my points in there because you have to equip a melee knife. I thought so. I was so And then you throw it. Okay. And it does a lot of damage, but you lose the knife. You can't pick it back up from your kill. It's just gone. That's kind of goofy. Fix that. Change that. Or instead of making it use your melee thing, actually sell throwing knives to have as your, like grenade slot yeah because yeah. at first i was like oh i got this perk and i don't know how to do it i just need to google it because i can't find a weapon store that sells throwing knives and i google it i'm like oh that makes more sense and then i try doing it and i used five knives to see on like five different enemies without like reloading or anything just to see if maybe uh oh, first one was a fluke maybe i can recover it nope couldn't recover a single knife you use it and it's gone and i'm like why why that is tough. Yeah. So let me reset my skill tree because I have like five points in the knives. <laughs> <laughs> how much? Uh, how, how much of the hacking have you guys used while you've been playing? Because I was surprised. A lot. Because I, I want stealth, so I, I need it. Yeah, I I didn't think I was gonna use it much at all, and just try to you know just do normal stealth kills. But to be stealthy, you really need to get into like the quick hacks and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and I was like AI awareness is insane. Yeah, I was, but I'm surprised how much I enjoy using quick hacking. Like I even put I've put like skill or perk points into stuff for uh, like I'm able to see access points, so things you can just hack and get like components from and things like that. Uh, I have one that literally just highlights them for you now, and you can see them. That's kind of nice. Um, yeah, and then I have another one that I I put two points in it, so I get double the amount of uh, eddies that I get hey. from that, completing those hacks. 
so it's super cool i i really enjoy doing those uh all around the game game's great it does a great job of you know letting you make decisions on how you approach the main points of the game but also gives you a lot of stuff to do definitely on a side note i really wish or hope that you can find and just to you know keep away from spoilers for brandon manny there's a certain pistol that you get to use for a small amount of time within the game mm. and okay, i yep. really hope you can, you can find, find that because <laughs> i was like so did you try meleeing with that pistol by the way i don't think i did ha- oh you missed out it has a special action with the oh. melee it's really cool but yeah for those of you that know you know <laughs> You'll see, Brandon. I think once you get to the once you get to the point where you're rounding out the kind of like first kind of intro act of the game, yeah, and you go yeah, through all that, you'll, it's a you'll little bit before the Cyberpunk 2077. Like, I, th- I think you'll be, I think, I think you'll be able to get into it because okay. once once you kind of see the direction of it, you're like, okay, cool, mm-hmm. I'm yeah. in. All right, awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, so no, I think cool. that's yeah, that's gonna that, be it that for. For Cyberpunk, uh, honestly, I I'm gonna be playing it pretty much every day this week. Uh, I'll probably do a review soon for it. Probably. I I guess my thing is I I feel like even though I've played a good chunk of it, I, I shouldn't do it until I've played the whole story. But that's like the. But that's not gonna happen anytime soon. <laughs> exactly. Like I don't want to go and play the story because. Mm-hmm. I know the story from what, you know, people who who play the game early said it's like twenty to thirty hours of narrative. Granted, like you gotta strictly. now try and stay away from spoilers. <laughs> exactly, Tough, it's Tough. it's a fine line I'm walking here. It's very <laughs> difficult, but I'm gonna do my best. I'll you know yeah. I'll just I'll just you know play the game twenty four hours a day, for like four days. Be done with it. <laughs> so you quit your job already. <laughs> Uh, you know, give me two weeks and I'll be done. Actually, so. Well, you, you better right. stop soon if you want to play Cyberpunk enough. You're right. You're right. I should just you know, give up. Just, you know, Who needs money? Up. Not show up. Yeah. <laughs> no. I think you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm... What am I still doing here? I should just be playing a game right now. Yeah. You know what? Respect. <laughs> all right, guys. That's it. We're just cutting the show right here. We're all gonna go play Cyberpunk. <laughs> Uh, in, <laughs> in, in all seriousness, though, I think that is everything we have for you guys this week. Um, not tons of different stories, but a lot of st- two huge things happened this week, and there's a lot to unpack with them. Uh, so thank you for hanging in there with us. I know there's a lot to go through. Before we go, uh, a reminder, the Twitch follower giveaways, twitch.tv slash DNC Penguin, uh, 100 followers on Twitch or 500 followers on his Facebook page you will unlock the giveaway of a Yu-Gi-Oh! Phantom Rage booster box. Our main channel, twitch.tv slash the Nerd Chambers, 250 followers on Twitch will unlock the hundred dollar PSN gift card giveaway. Yeah. But what else we got going on this week, boys? Well clearly we gonna have Manny playing some more cyberpunk streams. Like that's happening. Guaranteed. Tune in. I'm actually probably going to do it every day because I, I, I felt obligated to stream every time I play it. <laughs> I was a little bad and I've probably played like an hour and a half off stream, but naughty, but, nothing, naughty. <laughs> but nothing major happened. I actually played for an hour this morning off stream, but literally all I did was um, there's a mission where you can you like, it's basically a scavenger hunt throughout the city. Oh, and, I know what you're talking about. And yeah. I went and did all of them except for one so that and I was just like, you know what? It saves me an hour of stream time. So people don't just sit there watching me just driving around the entire city getting all these things. Thank, thank and, God for fast travel for that mission. I didn't do it. I drove to all of them, baby. <laughs> drove to all yeah. of them. I'm, Good I'm thing a, he didn't stream that, y'all. I'm, <laughs> I'm not a believer in fast travel. Don't like fast travel. Don't like don't doing it. Travel. Fine to have it in the game. Don't want to do it, though. I want to experience Ooh. the ride, bro. Fair. Well, you hear that, y'all. Go go tune into his stream every day this week, hopefully, and tune in for the ride. <laughs> the ride. Uh, 
As for me, of course, I'm going to do more card opening, Pokemon card openings every Sunday, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. But what you really all need to be aware of is stay tuned for February. Like, seriously, like, you know, we do we do have some notifications here and there and y'all are like, oh, you know what? I don't want to watch them play TFT or League of Legends or, you know, whatever other game they're playing. I just want to see the Pokemon card opening. So I'm just not going to turn on notifications because I know when they go live. But listen. You're going to want them on because if you don't have them on and you miss what's happening in February with Shining Faith, so much money. I'm going to have so, so much, much money. Shining Faith, y'all. I'm going to have so much. You, you're you're going to be sad you missed it. You will you will regret it for the rest of your life. You will be on your deathbed, you know, hopefully like 80 plus years from now, in tears thinking, wow, I regret this moment. Yeah, he sent me the really receipt. It's about eight feet long of pre-orders. Yeah. It was a lot of pre-orders. You just see this homie with a bandolier Pokemon card packs. He's just pulling them off as he goes. Oh yes. So that's just my big announcement, y'all. Just be ready for February. All right. I know it's a little bit away. It's two months and then some change for when it releases, but y'all ain't gonna want to miss it. In the meantime, just settle for every Sunday at 8 p.m. Him opening other things that aren't Shining Fates. Facts. Yeah. There you go. And then, uh, yeah, right after his uh, Pokemon stuff, I have my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Uh, a lot of booster boxes. We have the next four, five, five, five weeks of just straight booster boxes. And then once we hit February as well, it's going to just be booster boxes for a while again. So I'm really excited. It's going to be a fun ride. Hopefully tonight we get some good pulls and, you know, you guys can check out I the need highlights. you to give me my luck back, dude. Like, stop it. <laughs> give it back. I, I'm sick of this bleep like <laughs> give it back all right we'll like see. my luck was like three or four weeks in a row of just wow this can't get better this can't get better and it did every time and then it's just been a war and then brandon's been whoop, like it's mm. we'll see. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> no i think that's it because we actually got to get that stream going in just a few minutes here we do that is yeah. true it's coming yeah. up in like 15 minutes so that is everything we have for you guys this week Thank you, as always, so much for those of you that tune in uh, to the podcast on your favorite podcasting platforms. Remember to follow slash subscribe on your favorite podcasting service. Let us know what you think. If you're on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review. Uh, if you're on Apple Podcasts and your service doesn't offer reviews, just add us on Twitter at the Nerd Chambers. Be like, yo, you guys suck. And we'll be like, okay, I'll do better next time, Dad. Um, Damn. Be a little nicer about that. <laughs> yeah, guys. Why are you why are you so mean? To why are you so mean? <laughs> um, outside of that, uh, you know, keep track of everything going on with us all in one spot. Just go to the nerdchambers.com. We have everything there for you guys. From our social media to our YouTube to uh, articles that drop, everything in between, all in one place for you guys. Yeah. Think it's, yeah. Sorry, I saw your thunder there. It's all right, man. He's, you know, <laughs> I'll cry about it later. It's okay. It's okay. You know what? They'll turn into tears of joy tonight on your Pokemon stream. I'm calling two rainbow rares. Cool. <laughs> there you go, buddy. There you go. I'll cry. The gods have spoken. I'll See, cry. tears of tears of joy. There you go. Oh. See, <laughs> turned it around. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks again so much for tuning in, and uh, be sure to listen in next week for more of the news that you need to know. Thank you for listening to the Nerd Chambers. Come back next week for more news you need to know.